Okay, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I'll be discussing our experience with the use of acellular dermal matrix in the, in the treatment of Dupuytren's disease. We have nothing to disclose. So as we've discussed over the past couple of days, many treatment options are available for the treatment of Dupuytren's disease. None of these are ideal. The recurrence rates for all three of the most commonly used treatment modalities are all very high. And as uh, Dr. DeGrief mentioned earlier today, uh, the recurrence rate associated with dermofasciectomy is rather low or perhaps non-existent. And this was first demonstrated by Houston in the 1960s in a case series of eight patients with recurrent Dupuytren's disease who subsequently underwent dermofasciectomy. None of these eight patients recurred. And his findings were subsequently, subsequently corroborated by a number of um, following studies. The mechanism of decreased recurrence in the setting of full thickness skin grafting remains poorly understood. It has been postulated that perhaps the graft itself is capable of bringing in a novel extracellular matrix milieu that somehow decreases pro-fibrotic tendencies, or perhaps that the graft itself interferes with pro-fibrotic signaling processes arising from the overlying skin down to the susceptible fascia. But given Houston's findings, we hypothesized that we could potentially recapitulate his findings by um, instead of performing a dermofasciectomy, performing a fasciectomy with the placement of a sheet of acellular dermal matrix on top of the wound bed just prior to the skin closure. And for this study, we utilized alloderm, which is an acellular dermal matrix derived from human dermis. Now, the reason why we chose alloderm is that it's actually been really well characterized in the breast reconstruction literature. Alloderm is commonly used in the setting of implant-based reconstruction, and a lot of clinical studies have shown that the use of alloderm in implant reconstruction is associated with lower rates of capsular contracture. And the link between the, um, these findings and Dupuytren's contracture is that the mechanism of contracture in both cases are the same. It's mediated by myofibroblasts and excess collagen formation in both cases. And there's even a recent study that shows that alloderm can reduce local myofibroblast formation in the setting of implant reconstruction. And this is a study that was performed in monkeys undergoing implant placement. And in half the monkeys, a sheet of alloderm was placed on top of the implant. And in the other half of the monkeys, the implant was placed without any alloderm. And 10 weeks after implant placement, these researchers found that in the monkeys without alloderm, when they sampled the tissue next to the implant, and looked at the tissues histologically, there was capsule formation surrounding the implant, and there was also very strong staining from myofibroblasts. Now, in contrast to that, in the monkeys with alloderm placed, there was no capsule formation, and there was actually very weak staining from myofibroblasts. So given these findings, we decided to perform a retrospective cohort study on uh, patients with Dupuytren's disease. We studied 43 consecutive patients with Dupuytren's disease who presented to our institution from 2005 through 2012. And we split these patients up into two groups. The control patients underwent a standard fasciectomy, and our experimental patients underwent the standard fasciectomy with the placement of a sheet of alloderm um, over the wound bed just prior to, to skin closure. The outcome measures that we looked at were disease recurrence and wound complications. And we define disease recurrence as presence of Dupuytren's tissue in the area that was previously operated on and a contracture greater than that that was recorded after the surgery. This is what we performed for our standard um, fasciectomy in the control group. And in the experimental group, we performed the standard fasciectomy and placed a sheet of alloderm that was cut to the size of the defect um, after the fasciectomy. And the skin um, on top of that was closed in the standard fashion. The median age of our cohort was 66 years. The median length of follow-up was 1.8 years. We had 20 patients in our control group and 23 patients in our experimental group. And notably, there were no demographic differences between our control and experimental groups. And these are our results. The blue bars indicate the proportion of patients that recurred in each group. And what we observed was that the recurrence rates were significantly lower in the patients treated with alloderm compared to the patients who did not receive alloderm. Our recurrence rate was 25% in the control group, but only 4% in the experimental group. This was a statistically significant difference. We did not observe any, different, uh, any difference in the complication rates between these two groups. 
There were three minor wound complications in each group and all healed with local wound care alone. So in conclusion, the use of alloderm following fasciectomy for Dupuytren's disease is associated with a lower rate of recurrence compared to just a standard fasciectomy. The use of alloderm also appears to be safe and does not increase the risk of wound complications. And at this time, we are continuing to enroll patients in the study and continuing to follow up the patients that we've previously operated on. Um, and so far, our trends continue to, to look good and promising. I'd like to thank the PI of this project, Dr. Deepak Narayan, and uh, Michael Terry and also Caroline Goldberg for the help of this project. <laughs>